Hi, I'm Simon. Kyle, nice to meet you, man. Tell me a little about your brand. Uh, so I started my uh, brand about three and a half, four years ago. Um, it was on the back of a few different things that were going on in my life at the time. Um, obviously, being from Australia, things were incredibly hard to come by in terms of sneakers and, and highly sought after streetwear. Um, obviously, seeing it when I was here on holidays and how you know, people were lining up and going crazy for it, it just became impossible to get, into Australia, you know, to get them in Australia. So I basically got to the point where I was like, well, I want to start designing my own stuff uh, that I can wear as well as get other people to wear as well. Um, so on the back of that, I started, you know, my idea uh, was to call it All Out, All Out Co Clothing. Um, All Out Co, a bit of a like tongue in cheek look at streetwear, you know, everyone's trying to sell out everything to be popular and to, to build the hype. So over the time, my, my brand's uh, developed a little bit more, um, you know, I've got a few more messages and a few more things, like, you know, ideas that I'm trying to put out there. Um, specifically, I want to get, um, you know, people thinking about a brand, not just because they make clothes or hats or watches, but because of the story and because of what they're trying to portray. Um, you know, you look at all the brands now that are, that are doing well, I think their stories kind of get lost in all of the you know, the hype around it. So, you know, for me, I've got a couple of, you know, little sayings that go with my brand. Uh, the motto of the brand is under nothing on top of everything. Um, you know, a little bit like inspirational. Um, I've got another one that I'm just developing a whole collection for, um, and it works around a, a theme called the Takers theme, which is basically, um, you're not gonna get given anything in life, so you have to go out and take it. So, um, for example, I wasn't really getting anywhere in Australia with this. There wasn't much traction. Streetwear isn't, you know, at the stage where people can kind of start their own brands and get very, you know, far. Um, so I decided that I was going to come to LA. So I just took an opportunity and I came here. I guess that's uh, that's the, the background to my my brand. Nice, man. <coughs> I mean, so you know, what are some of the brands that you were really into, kind of um, that got you kind of inspired to make streetwear? I mean, we. All of you know all of the brands that you you basically wander along Fairfax and see from uh, you know Supreme, um, you know undefeated on La Brea, um, you know newer brands like Pink Dolphin, the Hundreds. Moving forward, you know into you know today's kind of streetwear, high fashion kind of uh, void, I suppose that was there before and now is being filled with brands like obviously Virgil's Off White, um, you know HBA is there, uh, Hood by Air obviously. Uh, you know, when I first came to LA, there was, you know, Fairfax was the place to go, and I think it's now expanded, you know, there's Melrose as well, and there's La Brea, and I think, you know, along from that, there's these high fashion brands that are, you know, really, you know, representing streetwear in a different light, and, you know, giving people who are starting brands a different way of looking at, you know, how to design things, you know. Maybe it's not about heavy graphic, maybe it's about, you know, simplicity, or, you know, flipping a logo, or, you know, putting four letters on a shirt like, you know, the, the Pablo merchandise did, you know, simple things like that. I think it's opening up streetwear a lot more for people to get involved in it. I mean, I think that's the great thing that's happening right now is that it's a great time to make stuff. Mm -hmm. It's become a lot more accessible. Um, and, you know, what we always talk about is the idea of, like, kind of connecting the culture. And that's why I asked, like, what got you into it? Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's really about the culture, like you're saying. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I think the beginning part is, like, wanting to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? And then the next is finding out what's your lane. Because that's the mm -hmm. one thing is like, if you look at Supreme, you know, you could say it comes from skateboarding. Mm -hmm. You look at, you know, Undefeated, it comes from sneaker culture. Yeah. You look at all these things, like Pink Dolphin, it comes from music. Yeah. So it's almost like, you know, when we talk about the product, I agree with you, it's not about, um, how do I say, just making t-shirts or mm. like being a graphic designer and making yeah. things. It's like, you know, what I want to understand and kind of help build is like, this um, world that you want to create mm -hmm. with it. And that is like the marketing materials, what's on your Instagram, mm. what's your video, what does your website look like? So I see you brought some stuff from your brand and some like kind of materials. Can you just run me through it? Yeah, so uh, we obviously start here um, with a hat that is currently in its uh, sample stage. Obviously being from, or well, being in LA, not from LA. You know, the Lakers, you know, amazing team, yeah. won a bunch of stuff, had Kobe Bryant for a while. So obviously just, you know, again, flipping other people's logos, looking for a, you know, a logo that other people will understand. So I just flipped the T with the, sorry, flipped the L with the T. Um, basically made it say takers. Again, creating that story behind it. Um, 
you know, try a few different things, like where obviously I put the brand name, uh, you know, everyone can put it, I mean, you know, there's many different canvases on a hat, and one of my, my particular favourites is the uh, XX14, which is my way of saying that I was started in 2014, so all of the hats that I have and the shirts will have that somewhere secretly placed, I mean, that's not very secret, but the t-shirts are a little bit more uh, secret, I guess. Uh, I also bought a little plastic display um, with my logo from a, a pop-up thing that I did a couple of weeks ago. Where'd you do the pop-up at? Between La Brea and Fairfax. Oh, cool. Um, basically, I think the second week I was uh, in the country, I met a guy who had a store who used it, but didn't use it really as a store, just used it as like a studio. Um, we got to talking, he was kind of offering pop-up spaces for you know, a, a pretty, pretty good way to get in. Um, and yeah, I jumped at the opportunity. So I had it for two weeks. It was me and another brand and we kind of shared it and uh, worked with each other. And um, it was a great experience. I learned a heap of stuff. Um, you know, initially I was you know, relying on foot traffic. Um, and you know, then I got out and I was giving out, um, you know, obviously flyers with business cards attached. Um, I, at one stage I was giving out bottles of water with business cards and stickers attached. You know, everyone wants water, it was a yeah. hot day, so just things like that, trying to get people, you know, thinking and talking and associating my brand with what I was doing as opposed to just another brand. Again, creating that story. So I was handing out these, um, got very few left, which is helpful. Um, so this, these are some stickers that I did up when I first got here. Um, again, on the back of the, like, the streetwear hype kind of thing, really trying to move away from, like, people just just lining up because they heard that the product's cool. The sticker says, don't deal in hype. Um, the hype is written in phonetic English. Uh, the way that I explain why I did that is because hype and hype beasts, you know, tend to kind of hide in plain sight. They're the people that are lining up, but you know, I know I'm not, you know, I'm not a, not a hype beast, but you know, they're lining up every week at these stores. So it's kind of hiding in plain sight. Um, I've also got a hat that says hype beast on it. Um, again, but it doesn't look like it says hype beast, so it's kind of hidden. Um, and then we move on to the draft of a lookbook that I've just been, uh, you know, collating, I suppose. Uh, so we've got, obviously it's, you know, it's not quite finished, but we've just got a, a photo shoot I did a couple of weeks ago. Um, just, you know, looking through all the brands. I've got like the cliche meant to look like Chloe. No. Uh, so just trying to, you know, get people in their natural environment because you know you put a camera in front of someone and tell them to act natural and you know they tend not to and then we've got this shirt here which is uh it's kind of like my version on the uh like the old school like collared polo shirt with the longer back you know small red logo and obviously it says unapologetic on the back because you know it's kind of like a not a go at polo but kind of again yeah. kind of hidden but it's there just two sample hats that i've been doing obviously again the la theme being in la so basically when i, I got it done um initially i wanted to be out in the open you know have a representation of the street culture um but for a lookbook i read up on it i found that my opinion was that the best way to do it was with a white background again get people in their natural mm. environment so i used a friend of mine who was a photographer we got a studio together and just, you know, again, try to get it in a natural type atmosphere. Uh, the models that I used were actually, uh, one of them is, a, is an, an up and coming rapper um, who basically hit me up on Instagram as everything, as the world works today. And um, so he came out and then just um, some guys I met handing out uh, flyers on the street actually. So they, um, you know, again, aspiring models. They, nice. you know, everyone likes to take a photo. So. I got them to come along as well, so it was, um, it, was, it was a really good day, it was really, again, a good learning, you know, learning tool for me to learn, you know, how to shoot a photo and how to get, you know, natural looks and, and you know, kind of get people comfortable in what they're doing, because, I mean, some of these guys, you know, the, the, the younger two hadn't been, hadn't been, you know, photographed before, you know, in a studio, so, you know, trying to get them to act as natural as possible while also representing my brand and you know, making them feel comfortable as well was, you know, it was a, it was a creative process. Nice. Yeah, do you have an online presence? I do, so I currently have um, obviously the social media, so I've got Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, I have a company Snapchat that I'm still developing the best way to use it. Basically I have my Instagram here, which I've recently uh, redone. Uh, basically I just use all of the, uh, the photos from the 
the, the, the three shoots that I've done while I've been here. Um, just trying to get an, you know, a, a more professional look. Uh, previously it was a little bit more, uh, again, like lifestyle related, mm -hmm. you know, photos of this and that and sunsets, which is great, but I mean, that kind of belongs in a different medium, I guess. So this one simply um, brand related. Everything on here is, you know, pictures of the clothing, things like that. Then we have the Facebook. Uh, again, learning, having spent six years off Facebook, learning Facebook again and learning how helpful it can be for a, for a clothing company or you know, for any company. It's been a really interesting learning process because when I was on Facebook six, seven years ago, you couldn't really you know, put your own ad on there. Yeah. You couldn't really you know, target certain people. It was just kind of like a way of interacting with people. And then um, I have my website, which is days away from being redeveloped. Um, basically has uh, a blog that is being uploaded, uh, the products, and I have two artists that are kind of, I guess, part of the brand as well, uh, in a sense that they, you know, help with wearing and promoting the clothing. Um, and they also have, uh, like, you know, a little bio on the website um, under the artist section that tells, you know, interested people about the brand and about them and, you know, how it got involved and things like that. So it's, um, the website is, is a work in progress, I guess, like any website, you know, for yeah, any yeah. company or business or whatever it is. We've got an artist section. Uh, it's under who wears our gear. Uh, and we've just got two different artists that are currently wearing it. So um, two, you know, aspiring hip hop artists. Uh, both of them, you know, perform regularly in, in you know, the, the, the greater California area. So it helps with, you know, getting it out there a little bit. Um, and we've got a little, the blog content, which I'm not 100% sure it will show. It won't show. So uh, I've prepared uh, like five blogs to just to do with streetwear. Um, you know, like what, what people are wearing, you know, what people have picked up this weekend, you know, just trying to get that community feel around it, you know, get people to comment on it and, you know, try and link it back to, you know, my designs and my mm -hmm. clothing, so things like that. I mean, I think the main thing is, you know, when I talk to a lot of brands, when people mm -hmm. ask me, like, you know, my suggestions or what yeah. I've learned from when I started, yeah. you know, especially when it comes to, like, what you want to make, whether it's t-shirts or printables, is the culture yeah. around it. Yeah. And I definitely see like, um, you know, the idea that for me, what the brand's really about is music. You know yeah. what I mean? It's really about the idea of the hustle of like, yeah. you know, like what it means for you, like, you know, your come up, you know, is just like the rapper's come up, is like, just kind of like, how do you engage the culture? How, mm -hmm. do you, yeah. how do you make it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. So when I look at like, you know, the product and everything, it's really about, to me, the strength is portraying the idea of like hip hop and how you want to associate with that. Yeah. And I like the idea that you kind of gathered like these up and coming guys mm -hmm. because that's how a lot of brands start. Yeah. You know what I mean, and I think that's a big part of it. And I think that should be the main focus of um, kind of the marketing towards the brand. Yeah. You know, and a lot of figuring out like, you know, for me, like, um, you know, the more you can connect with those artists, the better, like whether it's events, like, you know, for us, you know, my brand Brain Dead, it's all about art and like mm -hmm. culture and stuff. Yeah. So like, you know, the gallery we're at right now, we do shows with and, you know, it's about kind of growing together and, yeah. you know, building kind of a lifestyle mm. that people see and like, hey, like, that's yeah. cool they're doing a show with this guy or that's cool that they yeah. released this book. It's not like community kind of thing. Yeah, because yeah. I think, you know, the main thing is like, you know, the one thing that I think is the hardest thing is to almost have a meta contact with streetwear as a product like people don't even want to think about yeah like to me it's like once you like i think it's fine to have like the hype thing i think that's cool but i think it's mostly like almost don't talk like you want to kind of connect that more to like the music i think is the strongest yeah. thing because to me like this hat makes sense you know what i mean like this can work but this to me connects back to like the hip hop side. And that hustle kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I mean, you look at like a lot of the like more hustle mentality. I think that's something that people can resonate with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where it's like that guy's like, oh, it sees it. It's like, oh, cool. Like, you know, this is the classic, you know, I think a lot of streetwear was taken from this where it's like, oh, you're looking at culture and you're almost like kind of reflecting on it mm -hmm. and then commenting on what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So the idea of like the hat is a perfect comment on the, um, you know exactly what you think mm -hmm. and um, I think that's really important as far as um, the lookbook I think you know I think there's good 
pro I mean, the more you learn about product shots, the better yeah, and like yeah. get into it. But at the same time, it is important to go back to more lifestyle shots, but it should be always kind of going back to like um, the artist and the world you're trying to create. Yeah. So whether it's you're posting these people's shows or you're talking about you're releasing songs through your Instagram, you know, yeah. like little clips of yeah, these yeah. artists, you should kind of create more of a um, relationship and create more of a, a collaborative feel mm -hmm. where it's like, hey, how do we, instead of being like right away, like, hey, this is guy wearing my stuff. It's more like, hey, right away, you should make it more like, oh, this is something that we're doing together. Yeah, like, so, yeah, you're yeah, together, yeah. not it's just like, joint he's your seller. Because, yeah. okay. you know, to me, it's like with streetwear, it's like, if you look at these brands, man, like, it's almost like you're not selling a product. At the yeah. end of the day, it should yeah. almost feel like you're not selling a product. Yeah. Like, you go to a shop, like a Supreme or whatever, they're really not selling you the product. Yeah. They're very, I mean, they actually, they actually do the opposite when you go <laughs> to the shop. They like, yeah. do not very help true. you, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I mean, that said, it's like, that's part of it. It's mm. a part of like, you wanna create a culture, you wanna create a tribe, you wanna create a community mm -hmm. that you want to be like, hey, these are my guys, these yeah. are my girls, this is my club. Yeah. Like, you wanna be part of it. Of course. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, and the really way important. they're going to be part of it is by buying the stuff. Mm. And not saying like you should be like, push them off and be like, dude, like too cool. But it's more like, like I, we always say it's like musicians with like merch, like yeah. band merch. Yeah. You go to show, you buy the t-shirt. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the brand itself should feel like the way you like, look at your favorite hip hop artist mm -hmm. and look at the yeah. way they present it. And yeah. not what it looks like exactly, but like how it makes you feel. So I think the thing is like to always think about not like what's happening in the market of streetwear or like these people, yeah. but more like what's your take on it? Like mm. you've experienced so much, man. Like you, yeah. you came from Australia. Yeah. You've come from there, now you're part of LA. Think about that culture of how it transitioned. Mm. Like it's a lot of the yeah. brands, I mean, it's a big, there's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of interesting and unique things mm -hmm. in Australia. Like I'm, my partner's in Australia right now. Oh, he lives in Melbourne, but it's really interesting because like he has a lot of different perspectives mm -hmm. being so distant from this culture. Mm, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. That he's seeing from that view, but he's making something even better because he is distant from it. It's almost like, you know, when I look at like the card right here, right? Mm -hmm. It's almost like it's too, it's too much about product. It's too much like, yeah. okay, okay, about this it's like, what, like, why is this thing something I want to resonate with? Like, I could mm. buy a hat mm. at the hundreds. I could buy yeah. a hat of yeah. this. It's because Bobby from the hundreds mm. had that blog, right? Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. why everyone loves yeah. that was because they want to resonate with Bobby yeah. because they love his taste. Like, they love all these things that he, like, showcases and projected. You know what I mean? And you look at Diamond, for instance, how yeah. they're so big. Diamond, at the end of the day, sells hard good, like little bolts for skating. Yeah. But no one knows because at the end of the day, he started portraying this luxurious lifestyle of like a diamond. Like, mm -hmm. why wouldn't yeah. someone want a t-shirt that says diamond on it? Mm. It's like, dude, you know what I mean? Every rapper just wants diamonds, so yeah. why not have a yeah. t-shirt that says the brand's did, diamond? Didn't, didn't, yeah. hide, didn't hide it at all. He, yeah, he, so he, it's like, you look at these different brands that are successful and you could really pinpoint one idea. You have to expand your idea, yeah. but you should always think about the first, the like original DNA item. Mm -hmm. So it's like, let's say you're going to run with this idea of nothing given, everything's taken. You know, like the taker's idea. Mm. You have the hat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then how do you expand this idea? How do you show mm. this on Instagram? Yeah. How do you show this through your social? How do you show this on your website? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not just a price. It's not just like, hey, we're selling this taker's hat, yeah. it's like... Selling a gray hat with a black logo on exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, for sure. It's like, you want to create this lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Like, born and raised. It's like, born and raised, it's like, okay, where are you from? You're from LA. It's a brand about being from LA. Yeah. It's yeah. about being, you know, ex-gang member. It's about all these things. You know what I mean? He's telling his story that no one else could tell. And mm -hmm. that's what all these brands are doing. He's like, telling it through a brand as well, yeah. Yeah, and the brand is literally like, oh, I wish I was that guy. I wish I was this guy. I wish I, you know what I mean? Mm, you want to yeah. buy that product. Certain things are like, you know, like when I look at the brand, you know, you talked about your catchphrases and all these mm -hmm. things. And I know it's a pretty plate, like it's been done, but it's like the idea, like, how do you get out these messages of what the brand's about? How do you create a mystique around the brand? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I, I like the idea of like, you know, even with my brand too, it's like the idea of like the we paste if it just said like nothing given, everything taken, and then you're just like, on the yeah. bottom of the site. It's like, what is that? And if you yeah. had it everywhere, it's like, what is that? That's the mm. classic campaign it's of like... Qu it's the question and then they get the answer to the Yeah, like why, yeah. why is this everywhere? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's just like this one saying everywhere. Then mm -hmm. they understand it. And then they go to a show and they see the hat that like people are wearing. Like, oh, that's what that's from. Yeah. You know, like I always go back to like, you know, Shepherd Fairy with Obey. It's I like, was about to bring that up. Yeah, yeah Shepherd put the Obey thing. It was everywhere. 
is a viral campaign based on mm -hmm. art. But then when people started wearing the t-shirt, it represented this idea of mm -hmm. like, where I see this thing everywhere, but yeah. who's making this thing? Another good idea would be like, I like the idea of, you know, like if you're really passionate about music, mm -hmm. you know, that's an avenue that's super sincere and real and authentic. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, how do I kind of like connect with the scene that's out here? Yeah. You know what I mean? How do I get into more venues? How do I get my, you know, like almost kind of like work with a bunch of artists, find people that you really like and really believe in and, you know, flow them gear, but then also help them and figure out how to like, set up shows or connect and help build the shows. You know yeah. what I mean? Because the more they, the, the bigger they get, you know, it's more that you have a sincere relationship where you guys, hey, we grew together. One of the artists that is on my website, um, I actually manage him. So oh, it's nice. similar to it's basically well, what perfect. you just said. Um, you know, we're looking at getting him shows outside of California, try and get his base a bit bigger. Um, you know, I've just had meetings with like booking agents and things like that. So trying to get that as kind of like a, a project as well, I guess, within the brand as well. So like, you know, people, it's kind of synonymous with each other, you know, him as an artist, me as a brand. I mean, the one thing, you know, like when we look at all this marketing materials, it's, you know, it's a more of a traditional approach. Like, you know what I mean? Like the displays, styles and everything. And I feel like, you know, you should really look at how you can create materials that are untraditional too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You always want to kind of like, um, create something that seems different. Like like we said, like at the in the day it was Shepard doing the Obey posters, mm -hmm. you know, you make a whole brand out of it. You look at all these guys who are just making, you know, whether it's records or just, yeah. you know, musicians like Tyler creating, you know, golf wing. It's all from music, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I think the idea is like to like it's almost like you look at the stuff you do and be like, okay, well I see so many lookbooks out there. I do this. What's my photo content going to mm -hmm. be? You know, maybe I want to document like LA hip hop artists, you know what I mean? Like, As and then, then do a whole thing, yeah. Or you do five mixtapes or something, you know what I mean? Or mm. you, you know, you put on your site, like all these different musicians that you want on Instagram or mm -hmm. Snapchat in the studio with these guys. Mm. So you're basically growing with these guys, you know what I mean? Mm. And it's, it goes back to the brand and there's like, you know, that, mm. I think that's what's interesting where you can mm. really take it. Um, but you know, there's so many other ways, like what's your video content? What's all these things? And always go back to the music, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? If that's what you're trying to drive for. So with the, the ideas that we've come up in the music, how, how am I, or how do we think the best way is to get it, you know, for press to be engaged and, you know, for retailers to be interested? Because obviously, you know, we've talked about not, you know, throwing products in people's faces, but at the end of the day, there is a product and, you know, there is a, a clothing company behind it all. So I'm, would you have any advice kind of on that? For my relationships with a lot of the press, like whether it's Hype Beast or it's mm -hmm. like, you know, ID Magazine, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? These relationships were built off the idea that whatever I'm doing, they were interested in. Yeah. You know what I mean? So right away, you know, like when they look at product, they might like the product, mm -hmm. but everyone's going to write about the product itself. I think it's really important to create interesting culture mm -hmm. around it. That's the most interesting mm -hmm. thing. Like, yeah. it's really, I feel like with press, and I might be wrong, but I think with press, it's all about more than just the product sometimes. It's like, mm -hmm. hey, these guys are doing a drop of this one thing. It's like, cool, how many times do I want to write? That's like every brand's doing a drop. Cool, I get it. But the thing about it is like, if you look at great brands like Gosha, it's like Gosha has a perspective on culture mm. and what he sees and perceives the world around him. Mm. You know what I mean? If your point of view is all this music and you did a whole lookbook or a whole campaign around, let's say, Hollywood mixtape artist showing mm -hmm. the grind, like you see this mm -hmm. like crazy dude, you know what I mean, selling his records, all these mm -hmm. things. That's interesting because it's like no one's talking about, like you said, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? You know, for our brand, you know, some people don't even wear graphic tees that like help us out and support us, but it's like for us, they connect to it because they're like, hey man, like that's interesting what you're doing in mm -hmm. a cultural standpoint, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So. Every kind of like media outlet who we talk to mm -hmm. kind of like really supports us because of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the stores engage on both the level of like seeing it from the blog, like, oh, I see it on like Hypebeast or whatever, we want to carry the brand. Or they see it on like, hey man, I really like what you're doing with, you know, music or I really like what you're doing with these artists. Like, yeah. I really like that stuff. It'd be great to bring you in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? To do it. Because the more you think about like the idea, like people always ask me, how do I get into Dover Street or how do I do this? I'm like, you know, honestly, I can't even tell you because you just got to do what you do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, they'll come and find you 
You can't mm. push them to carry it. It's like mm. these guys, it's just like what we talk about products. Like no one wants to be pushed to buy something. Mm. They just want to do it if they resonate mm. with you. Yeah, and they believe in it. And yeah, they, they want to believe in it. It's, you know, it. it's, again, organic. It's, you know, natural. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's not cold calling them every second day and be like, hey, take my stuff, take my stuff. Exactly, because then they won't. You yeah. know, it's like a, it's like a girlfriend. You know what I mean? <laughs> the more you push, like, the further away they go away. Yeah. I know a lot about that. Thank you very much for your time. Anytime, man.